Charlotte Flair is in a media blackout. What is that? Why is that? Why is there more Charlotte Flair drama rama going on backstage at WWE? That is an all Ring of Honor. One of the most influential wrestling promotions of the last 20 years is on the ropes, releasing all of their talent. And now reportedly their entire massive and very lucrative video library is up for sale. Plus, we have exclusive news that we've learned today about Ricardo Rodriguez going to AEW. A lot to cover. Share the link or you stink. It's today's Sports Gear Wrestling Top Story of the Day. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. Watch out. Watch out. Watch out. Watch out. If, you, watch out. if you're watching, you watch better out, watch out. out. All right, triple threat of Sybaris coming at you. Sybaris, that is a three-headed dog from hell. All right, uh, and and uh, listen, we're going to get into it. We got a lot to talk about today. Uh, we'll talk about this show. Sure, we have a on. lot to talk about. We got, uh, uh, yeah, I, 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 know. I could have fit everything in tonight's, in today's show, man. <laughs> Wait, we, we, so we, have, much we, have, we, have, we have extra stuff that wasn't even in the intro, too. <laughs> yeah, we have extra stuff that wasn't even in the intro that's kind of flying by as we're doing this here. If you're with us for the first time, get your comments on screen. We got some diehards with us. New people, let's see what's going on here. We want to hear from you. Vat Daddy's in the house, all right? We want to hear from all of the diehards. We want to hear from all of the new people if you're with us live. If you're enjoying us, thank you so much, by the way, for putting our podcast on the charts. Uh, this week, our uh, audio podcast charting in Australia, the United States, Canada, Boom. and Great Britain in the top 100, top 150 in Apple Wrestling podcasts, podcast charts in all those different countries. So thank you if you're listening on the podcast side. Give us a review, by the way, there, too. If you guys Thanks, Mike. Yeah. Give me high five, a virtual okay. high five to all my Australian guys. <laughs> uh, there we go. All right, let's get into this Charlotte Flair story. Uh, this is pretty, pretty crazy. I know people lose their minds when we bring up Charlotte Flair. She is a, a character that people like to hate in wrestling, both as a performer and as a person. I don't understand the person part. So we had the big uh, kerfuffle uh, at the end of SmackDown last week where kerfuffle. there was a reported miscommunication or possibly someone, quote unquote, going into business for themselves. And this occurred and people got upset, and Charlotte Flair was supposed to pass the championship title of SmackDown over to mm -hmm. Becky Lynch in a certain way and vice versa, and it didn't happen. And they threw the titles at each other. Big screaming match backstage. Charlotte Flair escorted out of the uh, arena. Now, WWE was supposed to have her do a media tour uh, today into Thursday uh, with various different media to promote uh, WWE SmackDown this week on Fox, as Fox has had some shuffling around with the baseball schedule they want promote certain episodes we've had wwe superstars all clarity we've had wwe superstars on this past week to promote tv shows we had indy Hartwell on to promote uh halloween havoc which was a really really fun show love yeah. that show mm -hmm. um so sharon flair oh i had a lot to say about it last night yeah. in case yes, you guys you forgot so check it out check out the debrief <laughs> here so charlotte flair was supposed to do this media tour she <clears throat> is no longer doing it she's no longer doing it and there's no uh official reasoning why uh, but one would be left to assume that WWE maybe doesn't want her out there doing media at the moment. Uh, I guess. I mean, I don't know what exactly what the reason why she was pulled from doing media, doing interviews. Uh, but it was funny because Sean Ross Sapp from Fightful uh, put up a tweet earlier today. Uh, he was excited yesterday that Charlotte was going to be doing media this week. And then today he posts and they pulled it. Mm -hmm. So nobody really knows what happened here in this whole situation um some can speculate that it may have to do with something that happened last week on mm -hmm. smackdown but we're that's pure speculation we have absolutely no idea what the reason was it could be something else maybe they have some some other project that they wanted to do instead of doing this so who knows yep. it, maybe it, it isn't it isn't known but the speculation jeremy is there you know, yeah. like the speculation is obvious. Now, obviously, no one dub it, no one officially WWE saying, yeah, she's not doing this media tour because of what happened last week. That isn't the case. That mm -hmm. isn't the case. We can't confirm that. Yeah, I mean, you wonder. Maybe they just don't want people asking about it. So, I mean, I don't know how much Becky Lynch is doing. I'm sure Sonya Deville probably is not doing a lot of media, considering she's still in a managerial type of role and not quite in the, <clears throat> in the wrestling role yet. So, you, you wonder if they just don't want those questions to be brought up. Obviously, that whole... 
uh, interaction and things that happened, uh, you know, it brought out a tweet from Andrade El Idolo as well, mm -hmm. you know, uh, saying F U W W E. So, uh, you know, that got a lot of attention as well. So maybe they just want to pull her off of, uh, off of media just so those questions don't get asked. Uh, what do you think is going to happen here with Charlotte Flair? Is this going to affect her future? Everyone's saying all oh, this means she's leaving. She's going to WWE. All these people just running to all of these highly speculated points as if they were a done deal. And Man, we're getting more <clears throat> speculation because people are doing the same thing with this Ring of Honor story and what's going to happen yeah. there. That'd be wild if she went to AEW. Whoa. I don't think I don't see happen. it. No, no, I don't know. She's she's <clears throat> very protected and yeah. the company likes her. She's WWE grown. I don't think that's necessarily going to happen. No. She, I don't know. Maybe maybe as a punishment, maybe they strip her of the title, kind of have her sit in the corner for a little bit, kind of like think of what you did and then bring, have her bring her back later. Highly doubt that's going to happen. But I don't know what the repercussions are going to be for Charlotte Flair. She's Charlotte Flair. She pretty much gets away with anything. Yeah. Yeah. She doesn't have long title runs anyways half the time because they're trying to pad that total title reign you know so they got, got to have and her drive I don't, I, <clears throat> you mentioned that breaking that title reign thing her father's title reign the sweet 16 right yeah the, the, i mean yeah that's not a moment you can do in aew no. I, I i know you could you could say it and then they could total you know, world yeah. yeah yeah people could say oh well <clears throat> we're gonna you know but then you, i don't know it's just you know well, that i mean it wouldn't be the same it would they, be it would be like we were yeah. aew we wanted to steal that moment from wwe because they i mean I, they I don't counted, think something all he wants they counted rick's wwe titles in with the wcw though when it when it happened but yeah it's pretty it's a stretch to see her leave the only the only tie that she has there is andrade so um is that strong enough to leave a company that she's been established in for a, 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 the better part of a decade uh, wilder things have there. happened yeah Wild, wilder things have happened i mean bray wyatt was also one of those guys that was a wwe homegrown talent <clears> right <throat> he had it was in nxt fcw all of a sudden he got let go nobody expected that mm -hmm. yeah i yeah i don't know it, it you never know in wrestling but so this could be to protect her this could be to punish her this could be she is maybe having thoughts who knows i mean it's it's a complete wild card of, of this whole situation uh lewis chiadoni saying charlotte flair does not suck he does not think she sucks no uh, <clears throat> and uh, then you have people saying, like, making personal judgments about it. Greg saying Charlotte doesn't suck, but her attitude does. And there's a lot of people who think that in this whole scenario that that she's that she's to blame for this whole thing that happened on SmackDown. That she's the reason it wasn't great. I just think the segment in general wasn't a particularly great idea. There was a lot of great things on that SmackDown. That Brock Lesnar, Roman Reigns, you know, chaos promo where everyone got wrecked was awesome. Love that. Great wrestling on the show as well. Uh, and then this was just off. It just didn't connect, you know, and it happens everywhere. They try some things and sometimes it doesn't work. Yeah. I mean, there was so many better creative ways to do this. I mean, they did it with the tag titles last year and it, we all thought it was dumb. There's just better creative ways that you could get those belts off those ladies and, and just have them on both shows for a while. It's not that hard to do, you know, but <clears throat> uh, a lot of people uh, <clears throat> making comments like this, you know, gotta love, you know, fun, frivolous, stupid <laughs> things like this. Paul's saying, full of plastic you know a lot of people then go after charlotte and her looks and you know this just is just people going <clears throat> on that same hate train that they've enjoyed with charlotte her whole career is she's yeah. only here because of her dad she's only here because of her dad i heard that right away and i just gotta tell you that isn't true no you've seen her have great matches she's put in the work yes. uh, she had also she has her father's like there's some natural thing she got from her father the about wrestling so you can't <clears throat> beat that so something yeah. she's born with the truth is she's here because of her brother not because of her dad. So well, I think it's a combination of both. And then also she yeah. ran with the opportunity. She proved herself years yeah. ago. I mean, she was not going to be a pro wrestler and then her brother died. So she's basically here because of him. Yeah, and she's great at it, and she's one of the best in the world. I just think there's something about that where people just have this resentment to her that they're like, like, Well, if I can <clears throat> hate one person wildly and, and without repute and any justification, yeah. I'm gonna make it that person. Well, it's it, the John it's the John Cena thing with but on the female side. Mm -hmm. She's just yeah. mm -hmm. she she's just a perfect gets, way of putting it. Yeah, yeah, she, way, yeah, she's getting titles after titles, which made people sick of John Cena. But she's as good well. enough to get him. This yeah. isn't like she isn't good enough to get them. Yeah, you know, exactly. Like, and I don't the, think anybody's arguing the fact that she's not good because yeah. it, and anybody can testify and say that Charlotte Charlotte Flair is arguably the greatest women's performer of all time to this very day. Now, 
One thing is what she's portrayed on screen, and another thing is what's happening backstage. And yeah. I think all the stuff that we're hearing backstage is hitting her more negatively than what she's shown us the, these last seven or eight years of what she can actually do as a performer. And it's so weird because you don't hear these types of things with the women in pro wrestling. You always see it with men backstage. You never really hear a, a, a type of story like this with women. So that's why people are kind of also gravitating to it because it's kind of unique. Uh, definitely. Let's jump into this other story. This was the uh, unfortunate one that came out yesterday when I wasn't with you guys. Yeah. The ROH video library is reportedly up for sale. Uh, Sean Rossep, tip of the old cap to Millennium Meltzer himself, uh, reporting this story uh, that this video library has apparently been on the block for sale for about a year and change now. Uh, this includes a lot of big matches. Uh, we're talking the world title reigns of Samoa Joe, CM Punk. Brian Danielson, AJ Styles, Christopher Daniels, The Elite, uh, The Young Bucks. There is a ton of stuff in this, like a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff in this. Uh, for younger wrestling fans, you may be late to the party on, on Ring of Honor. Uh, this is the promotion that makes all of your favorite wrestlers <laughs> on, on WWE and, and All Elite Wrestling. There is yeah. countless people that are in there. And there's I mean, countless of people, not just on television, I'm talking about people that work in producer roles, people that work on cameras, referees. They've all made their way for Ring of Honor. It's a very unfortunate situation that the promotion is in. A lot of people think the promotion is done. To officially say that is not clear, they yeah. plan a relaunch in the spring, uh, but they will be relaunching without contracted talent. They'll basically be re reversing, going yeah. back to what they were before. Uh, when yeah. they're basically They're going to be like a high-level indie uh, without contracted talent, they'll only pay people by dates, but you could have champions, you know, losing yeah, their mean, not losing their titles and going on a television if it, contract. If you want to like uh, do a little name dropping, friends with Mike Johnson on uh, from PW Insider on Facebook, and he was commenting on this uh, in, in a, a pretty long thread on his Facebook page today. And he mentioned he does he uh, he will tell it, you know, straight out. He would he says he does not um, is not holding his breath for success. If we start to not hear Con uh, matches forming in January or February for Supercard of Honor at the beginning That's of the April. Planned. That's the plan relaunch date. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't hear, if you're not hearing anything by January or February, it it's going to be time to start hitting the panic button. He is he is worried that they are not going to recover from this. And there's a lot of fans that feel that way. I mean, there's a lot yeah. of hardcore fans that have been watching Ring of Honor, Ring of Honor and. I really didn't catch on to Ring of Honor until later in life, until I started, sure. you know, reporting yeah. about this. When I started training and sitting, because these were this is what the indie guys were watching. They weren't watching WWE; they were watching Ring of Honor. So this is where you caught that next generation of the superstars that we know right now. Yeah. So when you have the fans of Ring of Honor that loved what they were putting out. 15 years ago, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, right? Uh, it, it's really, it, it's heartbreaking to them. And I can understand that. And I, I can get that because I was a really hardcore WCW fan. I was like, ah, oh, you know, oh no, like now WWE owns it. Yeah. You know, so it was, it, it was hard to see that, but this is really uncertain. We did see this type of situation with the NWA uh, during COVID where they kind of shut down. Now they're back, but they're not back as they were before pre-COVID because that was at, that was probably the best stuff they were putting out pre-COVID. Yeah, um, Power was awesome. Power was great. That Into the Fire intro is amazing. Everything just mm – -hmm. it just felt right. It so, made you excited for their pay-per-views. It did. It did. But then you look at the uh, NWA 73 card and it's like, eh, I watched it and I was like, there were parts of it where I was just not – I was bored. I was not excited. There were some cool moments, but – Man, that pay-per-view was kind of rough, especially compared to how great Empower was the night before. Let me really in here, boys. Where does this tape library go if it is for for sure sold? <clears throat> you can get it on Honor Club. You do have talent that eight that Ring of Honor has under contract. They're going to stay under contract through at least March. Uh, whoever else is on their contracts are up at the end of the year. They're done. There's still a final battle pay-per-view, so we're still having one show. There's still another show before the end of the year. Uh, there's no other live events that have been announced that did have a pay-per-view recently that I watched that was absolutely fantastic. They just launched a women's division, uh, but they're owned by a big giant company, Sinclair Broadcast Group. 
Uh, so I wonder if this was a Sinclair uh, story. I wonder if this was something where they just said, we can't operate this company at this level and not make the profit. The margin just don't doesn't come back around. And coming out of the pandemic, there's a lot of companies that did this, with the yeah. exception of All Elite, just because they were still in startup mode. They still are yeah. in that mm-hmm. place in their mind. Uh, and they have they have money that they're, they're going to spend. They're not yeah. in. The, they're not worrying about losing money on this. I'll um, tell you what. If 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 Tony Khan is dancing around the idea of uh, getting with a streaming partner, this uh, is a for critical AE, part of that. The, if for AEW's library, I mean, what better way to get a kickstart on that? Whether it be on HBO Max or whatever you, you know they they may go on. Uh, what better way to kickstart that and bolster that than to have a a tape library of uh, basically almost ten years of Ring of Honor, which was more, about more. when I you're, you're you're talking close to twenty. Well, it yeah, says from this says from well, this says the tape uh, archive is only from 2012. 2012. They, then who owns this stuff from 2002 on? That's that's why well, I know WWE already owns a, a good portion of it because of Daniel Bryan and because of AJ they Styles. Had, they had they limited had some rights. Stuff. They have they limited have, stuff. Limited, like yeah. clips and different things like that. There were some matches they used in like a couple of network specials, but it was very limited. Was so very, I wonder if limited. I wonder if uh, before 2012 is owned by like Kerry Silken. Or something like that, because the what's up for sale is only 2012 on. There's still a lot there though. That's all the. Oh only- yeah, I got it. Like like Jose, I got into it when I started my podcast in 2014 because my co-host Matt is was a big Ring of Honor fan because he lives in Baltimore. So obviously they run a lot of shows up that way, and uh, so I got into it because I didn't even realize my like local you know channel 15 carried it <laughs> yeah I, they, they broadcast it like at one in the morning so. yeah i have a dvr <laughs> though i i a dvr dvr works wonders so yeah i i, I, I and i dvr you know i dvr the uh, roh today through uh uh through my uh, youtube tv since um you know i get like stadium i think airs it and thing, uh, things like that so the thing is ring of honor is another problem is they were all over the place on television you never had a set time when you can see them they were on a syndicated tv uh, uh network so in one town you get it on thursday nights at this time and another town you get it at saturday nights at this time or another town you get it like sunday mornings it, it was never easy to find on tv it's easy mm-hmm. to find online but i think there's just that there still is that like you need a set time when you know the episodes are going to be out of mm-hmm. Oh yeah, that's what kind of hurt their momentum. It's much like Impact right now. They're they're not getting much traction because they're on Access TV, which has limited access. See what I did there uh, <laughs> to a lot of a lot of the uh, viewership because not many people have it. So they're drawing barely over a hundred thousand viewers. Yeah, which is not good. It's not a good number. Uh, let's get into it here. A lot of people uh, wondering. What is going on with AEW? Are they bringing in more people? Are they bringing in more wrestlers? Well, apparently they're bringing in more broadcasters. Ricardo Rodriguez, who you saw for quite a bit in WWE uh, as the manager for Alberto de Rio. Uh, and he played, uh, you know, second fiddle to him. He is apparently now a part of the WWE, or excuse me, the AEW Spanish commentary team. Uh, and this was done recently on an episode taping of Dark. Uh, this is something we learned. You can read about this right now at sportskeeda.com. Thank you for the exclusive there. What do you think of this? Uh, Ricardo coming around, just another addition to the fold, another person that wants to be a part of AEW and 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 get back on television. They've done this with a couple of people. Vicky Guerrero rejoined television. She was off TV for a couple of years. She went this route. What do you think? So it's interesting because on the Spanish commentary side on AEW, they've been going through different commentators Yeah, like a lot. Right, like they, well, had, they, 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 had, they had some issues with that too. Yeah, they, they had that controversy. Yeah, they had that yeah. one controversial comment done by Willie Urbina, um, who used to be a commentator out in, in Puerto Rico, um, where it was it, it seemed a little racist. I think it was making fun of one of the Asian um, uh, performers that were yep. that, that were there that night, yep. and that didn't sit well. And he's gone. And I know they've kind of rotated a lot of uh, different. The one that's kind of been there per, uh, pretty much consistently. Um, she used to be a WWE backstage. Uh, well, I think it was uh, Daisy. What, Daisy Dasha. Dasha. Dasha, yeah. Dasha Fuentes she, in WWE. Dasha yeah. Gonzalez in AEW. She's kind of uh, 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 Justin Roberts' backup right now as yeah. an announcer. Yeah. So, uh, so the situation is that uh, Ricardo Rodriguez, he ended up having a tryout. He's not with the AEW team yet, but it was a tryout to see how he would do. Now, Ricardo Rodriguez is ma- mainly known for his ring announcing gimmick with Alberto Del Rio, 
back in the day. Now, he is a trained luchador, man. The guy can go. Mm -hmm. He was training. He has a school in Egypt right now where he's training a whole plethora of talent out there. He used to train people in India and Mexico, even here in Orlando, here in the school that I used to train at, at Pro Wrestling 2.0 with Alex Porto, former ex-WWE guy. He would train and have plenty of uh, plenty of sessions over here. So I got to know him on a little bit on a personal level. Um, and in all reality, he just really wants to work because he he wants to come back to WWE. But if AEW says, hey, we want to bring you on as a Spanish commentator, he's not going to say no to that opportunity because that, that's a gig that I want to get. I want to be that Spanish. I want to be the Spanish commentator in AEW or WWE at some point. Mm -hmm. But uh, but yeah, I think this is cool. I think this is pretty cool that, you know, if he can get that opportunity, why not? I think he, he did great at that gimmick as ring announcer. I think he'll do go on commentary. Yeah, uh, word is that uh, word is that it was uh, pretty positive on his tryout. So, um. I wanted to get to this. We have cryptic tweets. Cryptic, all we cryptic. Everyone's tweet tweeting about some cryptic mm -hmm. thing that they tease that they're going to do, and this thing's mm -hmm. going to happen. Pay attention to me. I'm going to be doing something. Mm -hmm. Aren't I going to be doing something creepy? And I'm the most creeptacular wrestler who's ever existed. I'm Bray Wyatt, now going by the name Wyndham Rotunda, his legitimate name on on, uh, on the social medias. Craig Backlund saying Wyndham has one more day on his non-compete clause. That is absolutely correct. Uh, he's been teasing this. He is one of the more speculated people about it in all of wrestling, and you guys and I know this. We get asked more about him <laughs> uh, when he was with WWE, oh, and he would only be on TV now and then than anyone else. Yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe just when there was releases or things like that, but anyone else it was him and cm punk now cm punk's in AEW, right now what is the future of bray wyatt where is he going to show up he has one more day to appear somewhere uh so that would line up on what exact day then would that be tomorrow friday tomorrow be... tomorrow so would, would that leave him available to show up on rampage uh yeah i mean he could i don't know if he will i i, I don't know if he i don't i wouldn't say he's gonna appear on rampage i would say maybe he might make an announcement may put a vignette out tomorrow or something i don't know if he, it's gonna was, be there's some tweets of him out with some people that work on horror movies yeah. so and so, he, you know so that there's some dots that are connected there yeah i don't i don't think it's gonna necessarily be him on t on tnt tomorrow night but i think he's gonna make some sort of announcement just just get ready for the aew loyal to be very upset that Bray Wyatt did not make his appearance neither this Friday or next Wednesday. Because <laughs> the fact of the matter is, guys, and I've been saying this for months on end, I think Bray Wyatt's going to start doing movies, guys. Even though he can drop that cryptic tweet all he wants, mm -hmm. but that's just my personal opinion. That's my personal belief. I could be 100% wrong on this. But, I mean, the guy's been working with a lot of high-class Makeup artists. He can, I mean, he, he could have done movies though the whole time. This whole he time, Ricky, movies, uh, no. We have we have a, someone. Someone's correcting us. I don't mind this if we're off on something. That Rampage is taped, but Was they it? could run it. They could run a taped anything. If Rampage yeah. is taped, if you want to reintroduce this. I I still didn't expect. I still didn't expect him to be on television no. on Friday. No. Yeah, it'll it'll be interesting to see how this plays out here, uh, and where things move. I think Wyatt will end up still in wrestling in some way. Mm. Uh, I don't think it'll be in WWE, though. I do think he'll wrestle in WWE again. I do think no. he'll perform. I, do, I think so too. Yeah, I, I think, think so uh, you know, with what he wants, it's just like Braun Strowman. Braun wants to do some other projects too. So Impact Wrestling and AEW are both conducive to be able to do projects, especially Impact, where you just got to be, you got to be there two days and then you're off the rest of the month. Uh, you know, AEW, you got to be there one day a week. So uh, it, it, that's kind of twice the commitment, but it's still you got the majority of the month to do other things things and so uh it, it's going to probably come down to one or two uh, one of those two companies uh since ring of honor is out of the picture now so <laughs> could be impact it's, it's be really impact. coming down to those one of those two companies now it really is it really is uh guys i did want to mention one more story here before we head out for today's broadcast so uh wwe today announced that an nxt superstar will be defending his title against a smackdown superstar that's going to be going down in the UK for our friends and viewers right now that are watching in the UK. Uh, they announced that Tommaso Ciampa will defend his NXT title the November 7th through the 10th. That's their tour over there in the UK uh, against Sami Zayn and Braun Breaker. The, sh the four shows are going to be held in Liverpool, Leeds, Nottingham, and Manchester. 
Uh, they're still n- unclear if they're going to be more NXT stars, but Braun Breaker is already going overseas. Yeah, I, I'm surprised they didn't pull the. I, I man, that that was the biggest shock of Tuesday was Champa retaining. I thought not the Rock, yet. not yet, not yeah, quite yet. The the Rocket was firmly up his behind, uh, just like it was on tra- Toxic Attraction, and so. That's interesting, though, and uh, so it's interesting that you know I I, tr- I wish it was a Sammy Tomasa one on one because that would be a hell of a battle, hell of a promo battle. This is too. this is uh this is still a great match. You yeah, know, you you got a lot of elements here. If you're a fan in the UK and you're like I didn't buy tickets the last loop they did, this is worth noting. They were in the UK just less than two months ago. You yeah, know? so they they're already hitting that market again because there's a desire for them to be there. Uh, I got to uh, talk to Stu of Stu's Wrestling Podcast, pretty pretty prominent one in the UK. I know it seems like it's on the surface, but I'm promoting these AAW shows I'm doing tomorrow on Fight TV, Saturday, Fight TV. Uh, and they, he brought up how there is a desire. There is absolutely a desire for major WWE events and major wrestling events in the UK. Mm. Uh, and I, I think they should they would do some really, really special things. Uh Braun Breaker, give him a good run, show it off. You know, remind people NXT did well. They did some big takeovers over in the UK. Uh, why not? Why not do it? And also, like I would, if, if you told me they were in house shows, I would want to do that. You're not bringing NXT on the road. Got to bring some of that talent on the road. With yeah, you. yeah, exactly. Especially with those house shows, like you get Raw, SmackDown, all the talent on one show together. Uh, the one they're doing in Rockford, Illinois, for example, on this one show, they have, they have on this one show, Mysterios. They have the Usos, they have Roman Reigns, they have Becky Lynch, they have Charlotte Flair, they have Drew McIntyre, Biggie, all of those names on a live event. Do they have the any weekend, right there? The weekend before Christmas. No NXT uh, guys, though? Just- uh, they, could, they could add them. I don't know. But I mean, like what they already have advertised, mind you, they can change, right? Uh, is, is pretty sweet. So, I mean, uh, the fact if you uh, are on the fence about going to WWE house shows, live events, this isn't the time to do that. These are some fun shows that they're putting together, and you're going to see some pay-per-view matches before they're on pay-per-view. Yeah. So that's it for today. Uh, thank you so much for checking us out here on Sports Gear Wrestling Top Story of the Day. If you haven't done it, make sure those notifications are on. Make sure you subscribe to us on all those different channels. We're on the Snapchat. Millions of people watching us on there. That'd be pretty sweet if a lot of them are watching us on this one, too. Uh, and check us out on all the different apps. We're on the, we're on the Spotify, the podcast as well. The chart's blowing up. I will be busy tomorrow. Tomorrow, I will be backstage doing the Mean Gene duties uh, for AAW on Fight TV, FITV, Fight TV, same app. You watch a lot of big boxing on, a lot of wrestling pay per views on. I will be on there with the Jim Lynham tournament, uh, two nights of the tournament, Friday night and Saturday night at 7 30 Central, 8 30 Eastern. Uh, and on su- on Saturday afternoon, we also have Hell Half No Fury, which is going to feature Allison K. It's also going to feature Sky Blue, you've seen on AEW. Her and Christy Jane's taking on those son of oh, those dirty jerks. And La Sociedad and a fans bring the weapons match. I'm not saying I'm going to bring any weapons. I'm going to be. Oh, man, I wish I would have been there. I would have brought my I, katana. I got my katana right behind my bed I and told, my nunchucks, I, too. I told Kev on Monday at, or on when, whenever we were doing Top Story. I think it was Wednesday. I told Kev. No, it was Tuesday. I go, hey, man, go to Home Depot, bring a kitchen sink. Then they can say, hey. They brought everything but the kitchen sink. Oh, wait, look, oh. our own, Ke- oh, our own Kev Kellum has a kitchen sink for those guys. Uh, but definitely check it out. Eddie Kingston versus Fred Yehai. Fred Yehai going to be joining me, the AAW champion, on tonight's Inside Cradle. That debuts tonight at 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. That's on our YouTube channel, on our podcast channel as well. Uh, I get into a deeper conversation about this Ring of Honor story with Sid. We go real deep. Why this happened? How did they get to this point? We go into that. That's more 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 content for you coming up here in a little bit. What's going on, boys? What do you got? Uh, tonight, guys, I got live coming up at 8 o'clock. Weekends of Wrestling on the YouTube and on the Facebook. Tonight, I'm going to be having an NWA wrestler joining me promoting their show uh, coming up on November 5th. It's going to be Pro Wrestling Action Rise of the Titans. It's going to be Jamie Stanley, who has been, uh, who has been currently working in NWA. So we're going to be chatting with Jamie later on tonight. Uh, plus, Rico is going to be is back, so he, we're going to be talking Halloween Havoc. We're going to be talking that ridiculous Ghostbusters costume last night <laughs> by the Elite, and how w- AEW is starting to turn a little bit more into WWE when it comes to that. So we're going to be jumping into all of that tonight on Recons of Wrestling. It's going to be live at 8 p.m. Follow us on Instagram. Subscribe. Smash the notification bell. 
All right, thank you guys so much for supporting the channel. Jeremy, I know you're busy with uh, Lost in the Mid card, correct? Yeah, literally as soon as we get off the air here, I will be uploading uh, the latest episode of Lost in the Mid card, myself and Matt Black. Uh, we will be breaking down Crown Jewel, and we will be breaking down Bound for Glory, and of course talking Ring of Honor and uh, what it means for the roster, where they may end up, things like that. Uh, search for Lost in the Mid card on where you listen to your podcast. Make sure you choose the new feed, as we are now on Anchor.fm, and we're also got the video version on youtube also just search for lost in the mid card or if it's easier for you uh, to remember go to litmcpodcast.com thank you guys so much for checking us out uh you guys are diehards with us every single day we see your names we love your presence we love the sean smith the ricky castellos the nishad jawaz we love you guys all right molly warmax i'm saying the names because i see them every single day you are the core of what we do and we don't forget thank you, you. And we Appreciate love you for you. it. Thank you guys so love much. Guys. We'll be back here tomorrow, Freestyle Friday with these boys. I'll be yelling it up at AA Dub. And remember, when watching wrestling, do the most important thing, Jose, Jeremy, me, Kevin. And what is that important thing, gentlemen? It is what? You shall enjoy it. Enjoy. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Wrestling. Yeah. Enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. Talk to him. See?